Good evening, everyone. Oh, yeah. Hello, Ivor. Hello, Jeffrey. How are you? Thank God, Rob. How are you doing? Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. How are you all? Are you all well? Is everyone well? Yeah. Are you well, Jeffrey? Can you oh, hear me? Oh, Baruch Hashem. Still kicking. Good. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> that's very good that's very very good we'll wait another few few minutes yeah. just for the others to join us we're just uh, gonna wait for them that to see that everyone joining us and we'll see what's happened in the parsha it's text for people. I think people still in a holiday mood. It's sure. Like. Sure. Hello, Iva. How are you? How are you feeling, Iva? Me, I'm okay. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I'm asking how you feeling. Are you feeling better? Better than I was. Much better. Baruch Thanks Hashem. very much, uh, Rav. Refua Shleima. I'm very happy to hear that. Okay. I'm going to start with dedicating. I'm going to admit one more. I would like to dedicate the show in a soul of Esther Kaden Bat Ketia, Mordechai Ben Rahna, Harav Avram Haim Ben Eliezer Yaakov, Tamar Bat Zeava, Yaakov Salomon Ben Farha, Dvora Rut Bat Bela. Shosha Blima Bat Mordechai Betzalel, Eitan Ben Keren Veishai Nae, Malka Regina Bat Joya, Keti Gurgia Bat Parhan Shmatam Tiet Surura, Im Kol Halale Amo Bet Israel, please God with all the soul of the soldiers, that the Shaul gonna uplift their soul in heaven. Also, I would like to dedicate the show in health of Menashe Najib Ben Faha, Leorab Miriam, Harav Moshe Ben Bahia Batia, Harav Moshe Ben Devora, Harav Shlomo Yehuda Ben Dalia, Harav Avram Ben Marina, Devora Ruth Bat Esther, Orna Bluma Bat Miriam, Shaina Kela Bat Hana, Mordechai David Ben Lea, Haim Nahum Ben Pesa Reza Kohen, Ahuva Kaden Bat Tali Esther, Baruch Ben Sarah Hiena, Tzvi ben Hava, Shmuel Meir, Shosha Blima, Yosef Haim, Yonatan, Ben Iris, please God, Refua Shlema to him, Moshe Avram Ben Henariva, Hayat Spora Bat Rahel, Ayala Eden Bat Rahel, Ayala Eden Bat Rivka, Hayat Spora Bat Rahel, Tova Liva Bat Rahel, Velea Bat Rahel, Velishmirat Kol Hayalet Badena Israel, for the protection. For the protection of all the soldier that no, in so. the north, south, all over Israel, and amongst them, Yehuda ben Liora, Mordechai Ben Menachem ben Varda Devora. Yes, anyone wanted to add up a name? Who wanted to add up a name? No one. Okay. So we're going to start the show. I'm going to mute everyone. And uh, Jeffrey, don't forget to unmute yourself. Sure. We are in Parashat Vayehi. Parashat Vayehi. And the parsha starts like this, Rabotai. Vayehi Yaakov be'eretz Mitzrayim sheva esre shana. Vayehi yeme Yaakov shene hayav sheva shanim ve'arba'im u'me'at shana. Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years 
And the days of Jacob, the years of his life, were 147 years. Okay, so on the chat of the Tfarim, the Torah tell us that Yaakov Avinu first of all lived in Egypt for 17 years. That's how the Torah starts. Yaakov, okay, Be'eret Mitzrayim, Shvaisre Shana. A point. Stop. Then the Torah tell us, Vayehi Yeme Yaakov, Shene Hayab, two life of Yaakov, Sheva Shanin, Ve'arba'im, Ume'at Shana. The Torah tell us that Yaakov Avinu lived in Egypt for 17 years, number one. Number two, the Torah tell us the two life of Yaakov Avinu was 147. And we have to understand what's happening here. What it means, Vayehi, and, ya and, and Yaakov Avinu lived in Eretz Mitzrayim for 17 years. Ma, what's the Hidush? So I saw a beautiful Hidush that brought by Rabbi Yaakov Balaturin. Rabbi Yaakov Balaturin, born in the city of Kelem in Germany 754 years ago. And he said like this. He said that if you take the word Vayehi and do the gematria, let's do together the gematria. Vav is six plus 10 is 16. Correct me if I'm wrong. Het is eight. Eight plus 16, give me 24. And then we have the last U that that's again 10. Together give me 34. Say Rabbi Yaakov Baal Aturim, I'll tell you what's the Hidush here. There is here two Hidushim. The word Vayahi come to tell you two things. Number one, that Vayahi means love. Yaakov Avinu, the most beautiful life that he had, the most beautiful years that he had from the 147 was the 34 years that he was together with Yosef. When Yosef Avin, Yosef Atzadik lived with Yaakov Avinu first from the age of zero to the age of 17 until the brothers sold him. The last 17 years of Yaakov Avinu, it was in Eretz Mitzrayim. With who? With Yosef HaTzadik. He said that the most beautiful years in the life of Yaakov Avinu, it was the 34 years. Another interpretation that it's come to tell you, that the only time from the 147 that Yaakov Avinu managed to spend time with his son yourself, it's only 34 years from the 147. Only 34 years. And those was the most beautiful years, the most beautiful time that he had in his life. Okay, until here, the word Vayahi. Now, we're going to go to Rashi. Rashi HaKadosh, Rabbi Shlomo Yitzhaki, born in the city of Troa. Troa, it's a city on the north of France. Rashi HaKadosh, born around 983 years ago. And Rashi HaKadosh say like this, if you take the word Vayahi Yaakov, he said Parasha Stuma. What is Parasha Stuma? It's a blocked parsha. I need to explain that. What's the difference? We have two different parashiyot in the Torah. We have Parasha Ptuha and Parasha Stuma. Parasha Ptuha, it's, there is a space between the last parsha to the new parsha, a space at least of nine letters before you start the new parsha. Parasha Stuma, that there is no space. Immediately you finish the last parsha, immediately the new parsha starts. And that's called parsha stuma. Come Rashi Akadosh and ask a question. I don't understand. Why is this parsha, parashat Vayahi, is parasha stuma? Why Dafka this parsha is a parasha stuma? That's the question of the Mepharshim. So Rashi Akadosh explained like this. You know why is parasha stuma? He explained like this, that he said that by the death 
of Yaakov Avinu. Because in this parsha, <clears throat> the Torah speaks about the death of Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov Avinu passed away. He said, Nistemu Enehem, eh, how does it say here? Nistemu Enehem, Belibam Shel Israel, Mi, mi Koshia Shabu. That means, Se Rashi Akadosh. You know what's the reason that this parsha is a blocked parsha? I tell you why. Because after Yaakov Avinu passed away, the ears, that means the way of looking and the heart of understanding, say Rabbi Yaakov Baal Aturim, now the Jewish people couldn't have the spirituality anymore. What does it mean? Come Rabbi Yaakov Sofer. Rabbi Yaakov Sofer, born in the city of Baghdad in Iraq. And he born around 156 years ago. He was the student of the famous Benish Hai, Rabbi Yosef Haim. And he said like this, that what is it mean, istemu enehem velibam shel Israel, that the heart and the eyes of the Jewish people become sealed, blocked, okay, isolated, whatever you want to call it, you know why? It's there because as long that Yaakov Avinu was alive, the Jewish, the children of Israel, spirituality, they were still alive because Yaakov Avinu was like a fire in the heart of everyone, of his children. But at the moment that he passed away, that's it. That's what blocked there. That's what caused basically the dropping down in the level of the Yiddish kind. That means that the Jewish people, after the death of Yaakov Avinu, start basically a gradual, okay, the deterioration of the spiritual in the life of the Jewish people. Until here, it says, Vayahi Yaakov Be'eret Mitzrayim Shvaisre Shana. And then it says, Vayahi. Vayahi. So the Mepharshim explained to us that wherever we see the word Vayahi, and the Hazal say in the Gemara, Masechet Megillah, page 10, folio 2, that Vayahi and no Ela Lishon Sa'ar. What it means, Lishon Sa'ar, wherever the word Vayahi mentioned, it's referring to pain, agony, sorrow. Okay, so what sorrow there is here? Yaakov Avinu, listen to that, Rabotai, live. 17 years of his beautiful life, the last life, with his son Yosef that he didn't see for so long. He lived with all of his kids around him, surrounding him. How many parents can say that, that they can live with their kids, with their grandchildren, with their grand-grandchildren, with their daughter-in-law, with the son-in-law? How many people can say that? Not many. Because many, if you look today, many of the kids, after they grow up, they get married, they leave the country, they leave their parents. Say, what kind of pain and agony and sorrow there is here? He said, I'll explain to you. There is here a secret. Yaakov Avinu reached to the age of 147. His father, Yitzhak, reached to the age of 180. There is a difference, there is a difference of 33 years between them. That was the pain and sorrow that he didn't reach to the same years like his father, Levich Hakabin. And where is the secret for it? Now, listen to that. He said, look what it said in the Pasuk. Shne hayav vayehiu yeme Yaakov shne hayav sheva shanim ve'arba'im u'me'at shana. What is the secret here? Listen what Rabbi Yaakov Baal Aturim explained and that will help us to understand why is a pain and sorrow and agony. Okay. Rabbi Yaakov Baal Aturim said like this, we know that 
when Laban, uh, when Yaakov Avinu left Laban, okay, Laban chased him and he caught him. When he caught with Yaakov Avinu, he approached him and said to Yaakov Avinu, listen, why did you steal my idol? Yaakov Avinu said, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I don't know what are you talking about. He said, you stole my idol. He said, I didn't steal your idol. He said, I want to search. I want to search. And he starts searching. And we all know that he searched all over the camp of Bnei Israel from tent to tent. He gone and he never find them. The Torah tell us that Rachel Menu stole them. What did Yaakov Avinu say to Lavan? He said, I didn't steal it. And whoever stole your idols should not live. Lo yehyeh, yehyeh. Yehyeh, look. Say Rabbi Yaakov Baalatum, look what it's the gematria of yehyeh, yud, het, okay? Yud, and het, 33. Hey, sorry, hey, not het, 3. He said that the gematria of yehyeh is 33. He said, from here you learn by that that Yaakov Avinu make a curse that whoever stole the idols will die. Say, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you caused the Raheli Menu to pass away. Why? Because you say, whoever gone stole your idols should not learn. You cursed and that caused the death of I'm going to shorten also from your life, 33. What can we learn from here? They say that you learn from here how much people have to be careful. What they say. To be so careful not to swear, not to, maybe not to, not to curse anyone. No, the word swear is, is, is maybe not fitting with that, but to swear on anyone, especially a tzaddik. How much we have to be careful with our tongue. And that's what's hiding behind what it says, Yeme, the two days of Yaakov. Unbelievable. Now, I want to go in more depth and I want to bring the Zera Shimshon, Rabbi Shimshon Haim Nahmani. Rabbi Shimshon Haim Nahmani, as you know, was a great Kabbalistic that lived in a, that born in the city of Modena. Later on, he moved, I explained, to the city of Rigio and he died in the city of Rigio <clears throat> in Italy. He born in Modena in the north of Italy 318 years ago. And he was a great Kabbalistic. In his book, Zera Shimshon, on that verse, he said, why does it say, Shnei Yemei, Vayihi Yemei Yaakov Shnei Why did you tell me about the days of Yaakov? Why is it so important? And then you told me, Tula. He explained that there is a secret here. He said that you have to understand Hazal in a Midrash Rabbah. Hazal in a Midrash Bereshit Rabbah in chapter 44, verse 5. Hazal said that wherever the place say, that it happened after those things, listen what Hazal said, that it say, Shnei Haye Yemei Yaakov. Said the Zera Shimshon, I'm going to reveal to you a secret. Hazal in a Gemara in Masechet Ta'anit. Remember Ta'anit, page 5, 2, folio 2. Hazal say, Yaakov Avinu lo met. Yaakov lo met le'olam. What does it mean? Hazal tell us Yaakov Avinu never die. Can you believe it? Yaakov Avinu never die. Said the Gemara, whoa, 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 how can you say that? 
How can you say that? Hazal say the, the, to, to the Tanaim, the argue between them, that Yaakov never died. Come the other Tanaim and say, wait a minute. How can you say Navi? He never died. I can prove it to you that he died. Yaakov Avinu did die. How? He said, I'll tell you that when Yaakov Avinu died, the Egyptian embalmed them. So how can you tell me that Yaakov Avinu never died, ever died, still alive? Rashi Kadosh saw that answer, saw that question, and he came. And he explained like this. He said that Yaakov Avinu bin Imbam, okay, by mistake. The Egyptian was thinking that Yaakov Avinu died, but Yaakov Avinu never died. He said, come, I'll prove it to you. I'll prove it to you that Yaakov never died. Okay? Hazal tell us a story in a Gemara in Masechet Sota. Rabota, it's a bit deep, but it's just listen to those beautiful Hidushim, how the Gedolim explain everything. Hazal in the Gemara in Masechet Sota in page 13, the one, folio one, Hazal said that when Bnei Israel took the coffin of Yaakov Vinu to Eretz Israel, what did Yosef HaTzadik die? Yosef HaTzadik took his crown, put it on the coffin of his father. He said, when people take the crown, it means that someone else is alive. He said that Yosef HaTzadik knew that his father never, lied, never died. In that case, in that case, that's a proof Nahon that maybe he'd been bummed. Nahon maybe he was inside the coffin. But let's explain what's happening. Rabotai, and now we're going to uh, focus with me. We know that the last prophet, who was the last prophet? Micha. The last prophet, Micha, in his book, says something very interesting. Micha, in chapter uh, 7, verse 20, Micha tells us like this, Titen emet le'akob. Titen emet le'akob. He said that emet is forever. He said that from here you learn you know why is Yaakov Avinu always alive? Because Yaakov Avinu, one of his character traits, the most important, is true, emet. True. And Hazal tell us in the Gemara and Masechet Shabbat in 104, folio 2, listen what Hazal said, Kushtakai, okay, what does it mean? The Hazal said that Kushta is true. Kai is standing. That means that Hazal telling us that Yaakov Avinu, you know why he's still alive? Because the character trait of Yaakov, it was true. That means the existence of Yaakov Avinu is always. Why? Because it's all about truth. That when we they speak true, that the existence of Yaakov Avinu. Because Yaakov Avinu Okay, always was one of his one of the best character traits that he had. He tenemently He always spoke the truth. Therefore, said the Zerashim Shon, that's why you learn from here what Hazal and the Gemara tell us that the existence of Yaakov Inu exists in a world when we talk truth. And that's why it says in the parsha, the Yuyeme Yaakov Shnehayab, two life. What it means, two life? Okay, there is the physical life, and there is that when we speak the truth. And that's what Hazal in the Gemara and Masechet Anin, five, folio two, hey, Amud Be, say Yaakov Lomet Leolam. Yaakov Avinu never died forever. Still alive. Let's go to verse 29. And in verse 29, it says something very interesting. And we have to understand that. Vayikrevu yeme Israel lamut. Vayikra libno le Yosef. Vayomer lo. Imna matsati hen be'enecha, simiatcha, 
תחת ירכי, ועשית עמדי חסד ואמת. אל נא תגברני במצרים. So he called for his son, for Joseph, and said to him, Please, if I have found favor in your eyes, please place your hand under my thigh and do kindness and truth with me. Please do not bury me in Egypt. Beautiful. Thank you. So here we see the Torah tell us a few interesting things. The time approach. for Yaakov Avinu to die. Question number one, the Gemara in Masech Pesachim tell us in uh, page uh, Nun Daled. Nun Daled is 54, folio 2. And uh, 54, 2. Hazal says something very interesting. Right at the beginning of the page, Shiva Dvarim Nistarim Me'adam. There is seven things that the person doesn't know. And one of them is that and ask the first question. Whoa, 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 whoa. But the Torah tells us specifically, ויקרבו ימי ישראל למות. Okay? ויקרא ליוסף, and he called to Yosef. That's me. Yaakov Avinu knew That is dying. Right. How can it be? No one knows when he's going to die. One of the interpretations that the Hazar bring us in the Gemara, you know why? Because people will know, let's say, that they'll die in, uh, in an age, whatever age, after 120, can a day that. All their life they'll do other work, and just before they die, they will do tshuva. As I'll say, that's why the reason that Takadosh Baruch Hu didn't reveal to us when a person is not going to die, uh, when he's going to die. Say Rabbi Haim ben Atar, there is a contradiction here. He doesn't fit. How did Yaakov Avinu knew when is he going to die? Rabotai, the answer that Rabbi Haim ben Atar bring, he actually bring a very mystical uh, uh, um, answer. And the question that he asks, he brings it obviously from the Gemara in Masechet Psahim. We say, Nun Dalet Amut Be. He say, how can it be? He say like this. He say, you have to understand something very important. He say that every person, each one of us, we have a soul, a neshama. In a neshama, I'm going to say it first easily, and I mean, the way that the Mekubalim said, and then I will end. interpretate more easily for us to understand. He said there is a certain spark there is a certain spark in the soul let's call it a, a positive energy that the light that those spark now glowing, lighting and none of us know when is the full potential come full. That means that all of those energy, all of those light in our neshama suddenly start to light. It depends how many mitzvot you do. And that's what can explain why these tzaddikim die in a young age. For example, Ari HaKadosh, Rabbi Tzchak Luria, Rabbi Tzchak Luria Ashkenazi born, first of all, he born in Jerusalem. He born 489 years ago. He died, about I listened to that, in the age of 38 or 37, if I'm not mistaken. Young. Why? Because he fulfilled the potential of his soul that all of those energy, all of those sparks was lighting. All of those lights that come from his neshama was sparked. He said that Yaakov Avinu, that had Ruach HaKodesh, So did they realize that those spark now starting to light. That means all of that energy in his soul lighting. So you know that any minute the light 
going to be taken. That means that he fulfilled his potential, he's going to be taken to heaven. Come the, the Mephashim explain that Yaakov Avinu, that was the chosen one amongst the fourth fathers, Bahir Sheba'avu, the chosen one amongst the fourth fathers, he knew exactly which energy to which direction to put. And Yaakov Avinu realized that he soon going to be passed away. That's why he called Yosef. We'll speak about the next part of the what he asked for the, the the thing that he asked Yosef to do. He said that from here you can understand Rabbi Chaim Ben Atar bringing Ariya Kadosh. How did he knew? Because he saw those lights sparking in his mission. What's happened with the go with a person that is a wicked? The person that the wicked, first of all, he doesn't know when he's going to die. But those sparks, not enough that they're not lighting, they're actually off. So definitely you wouldn't know. And then Yaakov Avinu asked Yosef at Sadiq, look what it says, imadi chesed ve'emet. Uh, Jeffrey, you want to read it for us? Ve'asita imadi chesed ve'emet. You made with me. Sorry. Um, in a verse, it says that. Oh, sorry. Yes. yes. Uh, please, he said, if I have found favor in your eyes, please place your hand under my thigh and do kindness and truth with me. Please do, do kind not in the oh, Yeah. Do kindness and truth. truth. Kindness and truth. Immediately, all the Mepharshim say, what is kindness and true? Said the Mepharshim, kindness is chesed. What is chesed? Chesed, that, that you do, that you don't want a reward for it. Emet is the truth that you're doing for the sake of heaven, that you're not waiting to get paid. You say, who do you do that, usually? With the deceased, why? When people go, okay, for the burial of the deceased, they're not expecting to get anything from them as a reward back. Okay? And that's the true kindness that they're doing with the deceased, say Rashi. Kam Rabbi Ariel Levchins. Rabbi Ariel Levchins, they call him Rabbi Ariel Lev Harif also. He born in Poland, he born around 255 years ago. He wrote the book Meloa Omen. Listen what he said. He says something very important. He said, we know that Yosef HaTzadik took the coffin of Yaakov Avinu and buried Yaakov Avinu in Eretz Israel. So that's the Hesed that he done with him, okay? That's what they call the Hesed. And what is the Emet? What is the reward? We know that the reward came later on, that Moshe Rabbeinu took the bones of Yosef at Sadiq and took him to Shechem and he buried him in Shechem. So how did you say Hesed ve'emet? Very good question, huh? How can you tell him? So where is the Hesed? Where is the Emet? He said, I'll tell you. Say, Rabbi Arya Levchin, he said, I'll tell you where is the Hesed. The Hesed was that immediately that Yaakov Avinu died, what did Yosef HaTzadik die? Took his bone and took his body and buried it in Ma'arat HaMachpelah in Eretz Israel. That the Hesed was, number one, that he didn't expect anything. But he met that he buried him immediately. He didn't wait. As he died, you know, they say that they eulogized him immediately. He didn't wait for a year, six months. Immediately took him to Eretz Israel. He said something very important. He said on the merit of that, that the person do with the deceased, he never know when he's going to get paid. He said when Ben Israel, Ben Moshe, Rabenu, when he redeemed the Jewish people from the exile of Mitzrayim, 
when he took him out of Egypt, they arrived on a bank of Yamsu. And the sea, each wave, we explained, was 50 meter high. They was frightened to drown. Akados Baruch said to them, go, jump to the sea. They was frightened. Say, Rabbi Ariel left Jinz. Say, look from here, you learn. Ra'a ayam vayanos. We say it in Shirat Ayam. And the sea saw, and he walked back, disappeared. He said, Rashi HaKadosh explained, Ra'a ayam vayanos. The Mepharshim said, what is the sea saw that he gone back, disappeared? Ra'a atzmotav shel Yosef. He saw the bone of Yosef. Say Rabbi Arya left Chins, Rabbi Arya left Haru. You learn from here that when a person do kindness and true with the deceased, that merit will stand for him forever. That when Ben Israel reach to the bank of Yamsu, to the sea of weeds, sea of reeds, what happened? The sea split. Why? Because the merit that Yosef done with his father. And that's the merit of true. Number one, Rasita Imadi Chesed, kindness, Ve'emit. But when you do it for the sake of kindness and true, you'll see merit. Let's continue. And then it says, Please don't bury me in Egypt. Okay. Very interesting. Yaakov Avinu didn't want to be buried in Egypt. Yaakov Avinu, on a shot of the Dvarim, wanted to be buried where? In Maharat HaMachpelah. Okay. The grave of the Patriot, okay, with his forefathers. What's the Hidush? What is the Hidush? Asked the Mefarshim. Listen what Rashi say. Rashi come and say, different answer completely. Rashi Akadosh say, Yaakov Avinu knew in Ruach HaKodesh that Akadosh Baruch Hu, when it, the time gonna come right, he gonna redeem who? The Jewish people from Egypt. He's going to bring 10 plagues. One of the plagues is going to be that the land, all the land of Egypt going to be full of lice. Say Yaakov Avinu, in that case, in that case, I don't want to be buried in Egypt. Rashi HaKadosh bring another interpretation that Yaakov Avinu was worried that they're going to make from him Abu Dazara, an idol to worship. They're going to come to the grave of Yaakov and they will say, Yaakov Avinu, you see all over the land of Egypt was lies, but only in the land of Goshen, where the Jewish is, where Yaakov Avinu kind of buried there, there is no lies. None of the ten plague affected the land of Eretz Goshen. You know why? Because the true God is Yaakov. Say Yaakov Avinu, Al tik berenina. Please, Al natik bereni bemitzrayim. Please do not bury me in the land of Egypt. So the Mepharshim, what's the Hidush? What is the Hidush? What is the idea? So the Mepharshim, Yaakov Avinu was worried that when the time comes, they're going to say, look, Dan, Sfardea, Kinin, Every plague that Moshe Rabbeinu bringing on us, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu telling him to bring, doesn't affect the land of Eretz Gosh. They're going to start thinking, and they're going to say, you know why? You know what's caused it? Because Yaakov Avinu buried where? In Eretz Gosh. If Yaakov Avinu buried in Eretz Goshen, they're going to turn him, why? Has v'shalom to God. Because when Yaakov Avinu came to Egypt, it was during the first two years of famine. 
And we say that for seven years of famine, that means that left five years of famine. After Yaakov Avinu died, Rabotai, listen to this. The five years of famine returned. The Egyptian never forgot that. They say now, look, Akadosh Baruch Hu bring him plague on us. And look what's happened. Elias, the sorcerers, the witchcrafters, the wizard, couldn't make it. Okay, because it's very small. And it's all over the land. They're going to go to the grave of Yosef. They're going to open it. They'll see that nothing happened to him. He's still in a full body. No, 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 no. He is. They're going to stop worshipping him. Say the Mephashim. That's why Yaakov Avinu didn't want to be buried in Eretz Mitzrayim. You know what was the reason? Because Yaakov Avinu was worried that Has Shalom, the Egyptian, will misinterpret it and start worshipping Yaakov Avinu like he is Has Shalom, God. Can you believe it? Look at that interpretation. What a beautiful interpretation. Let's continue. Let's go to chapter 48, verse 1. ויאמר ליוסף, הנה אביך חולה, ויקח את שני בניו ועמו, את מנשה ואת אפרים. Here the Torah tell us, that's not the verse that I want to interpret it, just wait, that here the Torah tell us that it's been told to Yosef that his father sick. Okay. Let's go to verse 7. Why am I doing it? You'll see now. And in verse 7, it says something very interesting. It says like this. But... As for me, when I came from Padan, Rachel died on me in the land of Canaan on the road, while there was still a stretch of land to go to Ephrat. And I buried her there on the road to Ephrat, which is Bethlehem. Beautiful. Uh, Jeffrey, I just wanted you to read also verse 1 because... To understand the question that I'm going to ask, we have to read verse 1, yep. 48 1. Please read for us. Sorry, it was my mistake. Yep. I, I didn't explain yep. that properly. And it came to pass after these things that someone said to Joseph, Behold, your father is ill. So he took his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, with him. Robotai, I don't understand. Yaakov Avinu is sick. He said to Yosef HaTzadik, Yosef HaTzadik took his, took his two sons, okay? And then he said to him, while he come to visit him, in verse 8, he said to him, you know, your mother Rachel, she died in a flat on the way to Bethlehem. Wait, I don't understand. You're talking about Yaakov Avinu, you are dying. You're telling me that you're sick, you're not well. What are you talking about, Rahel? What the Mephashim say, I don't understand. You're sick, you're not well. Now you're talking about your wife, Rahel, and you're telling us where you, she died and where you buried her. What is the connection? What does that have to do? What does one have to do with, with the other one? That's the question of the Mephashim. So I'm going to bring today the interpretation of the Or Sameach. Who was the Or Sameach? The Or Sameach born in Lita. He born 180 years ago. His name is Rabbi, Simha, Rabbi Meir Simha Kohen Mitvint. 
And uh, while I'm saying it, with us in the show is Hilton Kaplan. Hilton Kaplan's mother saw in her own eyes the Or Sameach. The Or Sameach, she saw him. She used to see him every morning. And I spoke to Hilton maybe two, three weeks ago. He told me that, that uh, his father also saw him, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong, Hilton. So he used to see them in the morning and he used to pass by their house. Listen to that. The Orsa Meach wrote a book that's called Meshach Chochma. And he said, again, I don't know. Yaakov, you know, you are sick now. You're not well. Your son coming to visit you with the grandchildren. What are you bringing in, bringing in the Heli Menu that passed away? What is the Hedush here? Said the Orsa Meach, I'll tell you what's the Hedush. The Torah tells us before that, that Yaakov Avinu asked Yosef to bury him, not to bury him in the land of Egypt, to bury him in the land of Eretz Israel. Yaakov Avinu said to Yosef, I want you to put your hand under my thigh. Why under my thigh? Because that was the oath that he took. Say the Or Sameach, listen to that. The Or Sameach said to you like this. Yaakov Avinu said to Yosef, you know why your mother died in a way to Bethlehem? When I, when I was in my way from Haran, when I came from Syria, going to Be'er Sheva, on the middle, because Ephrat, Bethlehem is on the way to Be'er Sheva. I tell you why. Because when I left Eretz, Israel, when I left Eretz Israel, when I slept, I said to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Bechol asher titeni, that means if you give me bread to eat and clothes to wear, you know, whatever you're going to give me, Aser HaAsrenu Lach, I will give you a portion of Maaser. He said, and me, I didn't done it immediately when I got it. That means I paid I fulfill my oath, but I delay it. You know what's happened to me? I've been punished that my beloved wife passed away. Said the old Samea, here Yaakov Avinu hinting to Yosef Avinu, to Yosef at Sadiq, don't delay my burial in Eretz Israel. Don't keep me in Eretz Mitzrayim. I want you immediately. Where in Eretz Israel bury me in Marat HaMakhtela? Said the Or Sameach. Now you can understand Yaakov Avinu Sik. They bring in the grandchildren. What is the connection? The connection is that Yaakov Avinu saying again to Yosef, Avi, to Yosef at Sadiq, do not delay it after I passed away. Immediately take me to Eretz Israel and bury me there. That's the Hidush of the Or Sameach. Okay, let's continue. I'm going to skip because the time is quite late with your permission. Let's go to chapter 49, verse 1. And here we see something very interesting. Yaakov Avinu call all of his kids. Okay. Uh, you know what? What's the time? No, we have 10 minutes. Can I do, with your permission, let's do one, let's do one, another one in chapter 40, 48. Let's go. Yeah. In page 46, 48, verse 15. Look, it's very interesting. Very interesting verse. Ken, very interesting verse. Look what it said. Uh, Jeffrey, 48, 15. Yes. et Yosef. ויאמר האלוהים, אשר התהלכו אבותיי לפניו, אברהם, יצחק, אברהם ויצחק האלוהים הרואה אותי מעודי עד היום הזה. He blessed Joseph, and he said, O oh God, before whom my forefathers, Abraham and Isaac walked, God who shepherds me, from my inception until this day. 
it's a it's a very interesting uh, question that the Zohar Kadosh actually asking. The Zohar Kadosh in page hundred and twenty seven, folio two. Say, so where did we see that Yaakov Avinu blessing yourself? We didn't see that. We see that Yaakov Avinu blessed Ephraim and Menashe, but he didn't bless Yosef. Hmm? But he didn't. He blessed who? Ephraim and Menashe. Veli. You, Keruven Vishimon. That's me, my grandchildren, that it's Ephraim and Menashe, they will be to me like Ephraim and Menashe. Uh, like uh, Ruven Vishimon. That's me, Ephraim and Menashe, I know that they're my grandchildren, they to me like, like Ruven Vishimon. <laughs> Said the Zohar Kadosh, whoa, 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 whoa. And here you tell me, Vayvarcht Yosef, Vayomer. No. And we see that if you continue, Amalach Adoel Oti Mikorra, Yevarech Et Anearim, Vikare Baem Shmi, Vishem Avutai, Avraham, Vitzhak, Vidgul Arov Bekerev Haaretz. Said the Zohar Kadosh, we see that here, Yaakov Avinu actually blessed the kids. He doesn't bless Yosef. So how do you say that? Say the Zohar HaKadosh, I tell you what. Say the Zohar HaKadosh like this. He said, I tell you why it said bless Yosef. The father, when you bless his kids, it's considered like you blessed him. Why? When the kids, when the children are blessed, and everyone praised them. And everyone said, look at those kids. Look at those beautiful kids. Everyone said, look at the, the father so happy. The father get such a nachas. It's considered like you blessed him. Said the Zohar Kadosh. What did we learn from him? Said the Zohar Kadosh. When someone blessed the children of a person, the father feel like he got blessed. Why? Because he see that his kids been blessed. It's like you blessed him. Because after all, what does the father want? His kids to succeed. His kids to be blessed. Said the Zohar Kadosh. By that, that Yaakov Avinu blessed Ephraim and Menashe, it's considered like he blessed him. Isn't that amazing? Interpretation. Okay. Let's move on to 49.1. We're exactly on time. So we're going to finish on 9. Yeah, I made it very short, but into the point. Baruch Hashem. Let's look. In 49, uh, verse 1, Vayikra Yaakov el Banav, Vayomer, he has food. Vayagid alachem et asher yikre be'acharit hayamim. Then, Jacob called for his sons and said, Assemble yourselves, and I will tell you what will befall you in the end of days. Okay. How about that, what's happening here? And I'm going to link it to what's happened in Eretz Israel to help us to understand what's happened in the 7th of October and what's happening now, that's what is the most important. Yaakov Avinu gathered his son and he wanted to reveal to them what's going to happen in the end of days. That's the pshat of the dvarim. But Akadosh Baruch Hu didn't want him to tell them when it's going to be the end, the final galut, the galut Edom that we are now. Come the Midrash in Bereshit Rabbah, in uh, page 98, page, uh, no, chapter 98. Ber Hazal said that Yaakov Avinu actually warning his kids not to have an argument, not to have a parable. 
קם רבי יעקב אבו חצירה. רבי יעקב אבו חצירה, בון אין מרוקו, היא בון אראונד 219 years ago, if I'm not mistaken, in a city of Tiflat. And he been called the Abir Yaakov. There is a book that called Abir Yaakov. It's a commentary on the Torah. Beautiful, beautiful, beyond understanding. Depths like you never saw. What it mean Abu Hatsira? Abu in Arabic is the father. Hatsira, it's the father, okay, of the, 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 the carpet. Why did they call him the father of the carpet to that family? Because one day the, he didn't have money. He gone to the captain of the boat and he said, listen, I need to sail with you across. And they said to him, you need to pay. He said, I don't have money. He said, but I'll pay you. Don't worry. And he said, you pay me now. You don't pay me enough. Well, I'll leave you. He said, in that case, leave me. He had a small carpet, you know, small rug. He sit on it. And when the ship starting to sail, he said, Kabbalah Masit, he said the name of special angel. And suddenly the captain and everyone saw him floating on a sea and actually getting ahead of them. The captain said, how stupid I was that I didn't allow the holy man to come into my boat. And since then, they call the family Abu Hatsira. Abu is the father, the father of the rag that float on the sea. Okay. So he wrote a book right. that's called Abir Yaakov. And he said like this. He said, look what Yosef HaTzadik said. And that's what he telling them. And that's what actually is the Geula depends on. You want to be redeemed? Look what Yaakov said to you. Now I'm going to repeat. It said like this. Vaikra Yaakov el banav. Yaakov called his kids. Vayomer. And he said to them, Gedah. Geda, and I'll tell you what's going to happen in the end of the day. Say Rabbi Yaakov Abu Hatsira. Here is the answer to be redeemed. We want Mashiach. We all want Mashiach. Here's the answer. Say Rabbi Yaakov Abu Hatsira. He has who? Become and live in unity. Live as an asifa. Asifa is a gathering. When you get it together, always live in unity and peace and love each other in harmony. He said, that's the key to be redeemed. Yeah. That's the key for the Mashiach to come. Rabota, before 7 of October, the, the nation was split. Look today, every day, we have a Gezerah. The Israeli Defense Force allowed to release the name of people that died. But the soldiers are so united. They, some of them not religious. Some of them never wear a army, never wear a city. Today, every person in the Israeli Defense Force almost wearing a city. There is a platoon that been saved just three days ago that took on themselves that from now on, they're going to dive in Minha. Why? Because they operate in uh, Gaza and they sit in a building. In a building. So one of the guys say, we're sitting to rest. I have a few minutes. I didn't dive in Minha. One of the soldiers. He said, I'm going to face Jerusalem. So Gaza is in the south. He faced Jerusalem in, you know, in the north. He start to face to the north and start to dive in Minha. While he's doing Amida from the, from the ground, he see a terrorist coming. He obviously cocked his gun and start shooting and he start to scream Mehabel. 
Everyone heard it, but they was facing their back to that terrorist. If that terrorist, if that, sorry, if that soldier wouldn't dive in Minha, all of that platoon will be killed. Why? Because he would shoot anti-tank missiles, call it RPG. When they saw that miracle, that because one of the soldiers, Davin Minha, and he saved their lives, they said, we're all going to Davin Minha from now on. So the miracle that we see, the unity that we see, the love that there is now, is beyond understanding. Here is the answer. Vaikra Yaakov el Banav, Yaakov call all of his kids. Vayomer, he asfu, gather, get together, be together, be as a unit, be as one unit, live in unity and peace, in love, in harmony with each other. Vayadida lachem et asher ikre lachem beacharit hayamin. That's what when it's going to be the end of days. When it's going to be the end of days? When we're going to live together in unity. I don't have to agree with your opinion. I don't have to. But I need to respect you. I need to live with peace and harmony together. If you do something, I need to respect you. It doesn't mean that I have to be like you. I have the right not to agree with you. But I'm obligated to respect you, to honor you, to live together, no matter what. And Rabota, in the moment that Am Israel got united, the decree got changed. 360 degrees. They attacked us. They slaughtered us. They burned us alive. They raped us. What they didn't do to us. And look where they are, and look where we are. Unity. Akadosh Baruch Hu wants from us. It doesn't make a difference if I wear a yami. What kind of a yami? What kind of a beard I have? If I have a beard, if I don't have a beard. Akadosh Baruch Hu not interested about it. That he's not interested. He wants unity. He wants peace. He wants us to love each other. Rabotai. In an army, there's all different units. They're all working together. And that's how we're winning. When the infantry and the Navy and the Air Force, the cook, I don't know what you want to bring, the intelligent, whatever, they're all working as one unit, we can win. And that's the secret of a Mashiach coming to us. If we just work together, if we just live together in peace and harmony, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will send us Mashiach. And that's what revealed to us Rabbi Yaakov Abu Hatshir. So Be'ezrat Hashem, that we all can spread that message. How important is the unity, the love, that we live together the love, the peace, and the unity amongst the Am Israel. And Be'ezrat Hashem, if we do that, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will send us Mashiach to Kenu speedily in our day. Amen. Can you answer? With that, I wanted to conclude. I know that I took four minutes more, but uh, I felt like I needed to put it together. Bechavod, Rabotai, I hope First of all, I would like to thank each one of you individually for joining the show. There is any question, please unmute yeah. the mic before you want to add up something. Bechavo. Rav, can I mention something? Um, sure, sure, sure. First of all, a big issue, Koya. You know, uh, the, you. Reason why, the reason why I couldn't join your shear is um, I was, uh, hold on. The reason why I couldn't join the shear is that I was, at the, I was at a shiva of Yaron uh, Chitters. Here in Renana, yes. and I'm still I'm still in Renana, and um, it's it's unbelievable. My brother and my my niece went to the Labai. It was in Renana this afternoon, and I spoke to Debbie and to Clive, and they're both from South Africa, 
and their son was Mumshat Sadiq. And, you know, there were thousands and thousands of people who went to the, the Levi and people couldn't even get in. It was so full that people couldn't even get in. So people had to stand on the street. And Shlo one of the greatest singers in, in, in Israel, Shlomi Shabbat, he was at the Levi and he sang at the Levi. And he's not from, you know, he's, he doesn't wear a kippah, but he he represents what Israel should be. And he came to the Levi and the family were so overcome with emotion that there were thousands and thousands of people um, coming to show respects for a tzaddik that has fallen in Am Israel. And Rav, what you mentioned about all the Nisim, I heard from a patient of mine who works at Chariot Tzedek, that when they brought in the injured soldiers, we have the helicopters coming, and we hear the helicopters coming. And he said one of the soldiers, he was wearing a mug and dovet, and the bullet went, and it hit the mug and dovet, and it was deflected. I mean, it's just Nisim and Niflaot. All the time. So, uh, and, and, and the unity that you see here, secular, religious, it's something I haven't witnessed. It's the first time that I'm witnessing such I'm Israel Chai, and we really are I'm a Chad and I'm a Yuchad. We're special you know, and it's many people ask why Dafka? Why Dafka in Simhat Torah? Why Dafka in Simhat Torah? Akadosh Baruch Hu done it. And I heard a beautiful answer. Kadosh Baruch Hu said in Simhat Torah we all should live in unity and peace. My nation wasn't in peace and unity together for a long time. I'm going to bring them together. But I want to say one thing. We don't understand what Hazal said. When a person dies for the sake that he's Jewish, embria, embria, there is no creation in this world. No one, no one can understand the righteousness of that person. That the person that done for the sake of heaven, because he's Jewish, he, Gehenna, first of all, he doesn't see. He goes straight to heaven. But in, in Gan Eden, Shum Biriya, there is no such a soul that can be next to them. Those soldiers that die, that they tzaddik him in a different level that we never understand. Many people say, what are you talking? You never was religious. Do you, if Tazal tell us the Chum Birya, no soul, no creation of the Almighty, no angels, no no one can say. Only the next to Akadosh Baruch Hu. Do you understand? What is it? You don't understand to see thousands of people going to each Leviah. Different people that they, I'm sure that Shlomi Shabbat didn't know him. To come and show respect. Rabotai, this has show us the unity. This is the strength of Am Israel. Am Israel, the Am Anetzah. Am Israel, the Jewish nation, the Am Anetzah. Am is a nation. Netzah, it's the immortal. It's We're going to look forever. No one can take us. We just have to live in peace and unity together. That's, that's the Hiddish. And Be'ezrat Hashem, we should take this message that Yaakov Avinu sent us with the interpretation of Rabbi Yaakov Abu Hatira, and we're going to spread that word, unity, unity, unity amongst the Jewish people. Frank, I see that you want to ask a question. Behavod, Frank. Yes, did I unmute myself? Am I unmuted? Let me just no, check. No, no, no. You're unmuted. Yeah, I am. Okay. Yeah, but I want to ask, ask you something. When you said Vayachi, uh, and it comes to tell us, you know, that uh, uh, with Jacob, uh, he was about to die, and then the, all the trouble would come on to the um, Jewish people uh, in Goshen. Now, did they not wait until all the brothers had died and Yosef have died? Or was this uh, uh, the beginning of it from there on? When did the beginning start? Okay. So until the last member of the tribe die, the Sheabud, mm -hmm. what it means, the Sheabud, the Sheabud, the physical uh, 
uh, of uh, the, 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 the hard work meant didn't start. What does it mean? The Jewish people, there was in a high spiritual level as long as that Yaakov Avinu was alive. And after Yaakov Avinu died, member of the tribe of each tribe died. Yaakov Avinu had 12 sons. The last of them to die, okay, that was Levi. Hazal said after Shevet Levi died, but during that time between Yaakov Avinu, that was all of them tzaddikim, you know, when Yaakov Avinu died, this one starts coming every every time to daven. This one didn't come on time to study. You know, I'm just giving an example. Sorry. It started to become not as level that when Yaakov Avinu was. So mm. as the brothers, as the son of Yaakov Avinu died, they also there it was a declining of Bnei Israel until they reached to a different situation that they never done Brit Milah like the Egyptian. They didn't, okay, worship Akadosh Baruch Hu. They start worshiping idols. They reached to the 49 level of Tuna. What does it mean? That after Yaakov Avinu passed away, the declining started. You understand? Yes, yes. Okay. That's what I meant. Okay. But it didn't yeah. happen immediately. Yeah. It's the declining, you know, it's take from I, generation yes, to generation. Yes. Okay. You understand. Yeah. Okay. That's what I meant. Okay. okay. Thanks, Rabbi. Yeah. Thank you pleasure. very much. Pleasure, pleasure. Any other question? Behavo. Rob, Any questions? Is yeah, the... <laughs> Good evening. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, Rob, I, you mentioned a very interesting thing. There are two interesting things. One, the first thing is uh, with the, the, the fact of the, the land of Egypt, uh, one of the plagues of the lice. And then you mentioned that uh, uh, Yaakov, uh, uh, that, uh, Yaakov did not want to be buried there. Uh, but but the, one of the main reasons what they he, he did not want people to make a god out of him. Uh, for Shalom, he, do, he didn't want a shrine where people would come past and bow to and pray to. It's it's, it's the first time we see that in in our tour, but we we see a similar thing, not mentioned, but isn't the same with Moshe when he went up. And that's why we can't know exactly the this right to build a place to recognize Moshe because we do the same thing. Because he was in the eyes of everybody, he was the one that did everything. I mean, yes, we they they knew it came to Hashem, but looking at it face value, Moshe did all the everything that had to be done. So uh -huh. here this is the uh -huh. incredible thing that the greatness of these people. The greatness of the, the uh, of our forefathers and the, the people that come before us. Look what they've done. Look, they have given us a way to show that Hashem does everything. It's all Hashem. We're just instruments in Hashem's hand, doing carrying out His will. Absolutely. This is what the messenger. The we messenger. Just the messenger. We're we're just the messengers. Now uh, we have now have a situation where a situation has been created where we are now fighting for our existence no. and we are fighting in unity. In unity. Now this has this terrible, terrible incident that which took place has actually bonded us. And this is almost like you've mentioned the end of days. The end of days has got to be unified. There's got to be unity. We are knocking on the door. Now, oh, is this the moment? The end of days, does it mean the end of our exile? Does it mean a new dispensation for the whole world? Or does it mean some of it? Or does it mean the coming of Mashiach? Is that so, what the actual end of days so, mean? So all what you're saying, 
the end of days is the coming of Mashiach. The Rambam, the Rambam, he answered Mashiach. He explained, The Rambam said, when the, we're not going to understand what's going to happen when the Mashiach come until he will come. There's many interpretation that are done, the, the Nevuot, I've done a show about it. Maybe I should do again a show about it regarding the end of days. Aharita Yamim, it's called. And I brought the Malbin. The Malbin uh, on Sefer Yeheskel, on the, on the book of uh, um, Yeheskel. How you call Yeheskel? I don't know how you say Yeheskel in English, but um, Ezekiel. 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 On the book of Ezekiel. The Malbin explained there many of the Mepharshim. Maybe I'll do again a show about it. Aharit Yamim, Hazal in Gemara in Masechet Sukkah. That's had to be a war of Megiddo. I've done a show about it also. Maybe I should do again. Gogo the war Magog. will start Gogo Magog. Gematria Shivaim. Shivim Mumot Aulam Gog Magog Shivim. As I'll say, like this. The war gonna start Boshana Rabba. Will end in Pesach. As I'll say, Be Pesach Nigalu, Be Pesach Atidim Ligayel. Maybe I should do a show. What's gonna happen? Said the Rambam. No one can tell you. Lo Neda. Achi, Mashi, no one can tell you. People have speculation. What exactly going to happen? We don't know. But we know one thing. It starts with Gaza. Look where it's going. It's going to the Red Sea. Today, India announced that she's going to send her ships yeah. Yeah. to that area. But what I Iran not going to sit quiet. Mm-mm. You understand? The thing going exactly like the prophecy of our prophet. Everything, step by step. In the end, it says, mm-hmm. That's what we say every day after Shiratayam. But Hazal tells us, What does it mean, Niflaot? Why not say Niflaot, wonders? Niflaot. What do you have that? Hazal said to tell you noon shall niflaot for wondrous will be Hazal saying Gemara Kadosh Baruch Hu will do 50 times more miracle and then when and the last redemption than what he done to Ben Israel. The miracle going to be 50 times more. Yes. Mitzrayim. We don't understand. Mitzrayim. That's what Rehram Bam said. We can never tell what's going to happen until it's going to happen. Yeah. Hashem, I wanted to speak on Sunday, uh, the subject of the show, why do we cover our eyes? You know, when we say Shema Israel, we cover our eyes. There's different way I will explain how to do that according to the mystical rabbi, according to the pshat of the dvarim. Why do we have to cover our eyes? It's the only thing that we cover our eyes. Shmona Esrei, that we dive in Shmona Esrei, the highest. We don't cover our eyes. Why that can Shmona Esrei? You ask a person, give me one symbol of the Jewish people. People will say Shmona Esrei, Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. Yeah. What's so special about it? What's hiding behind covering the eyes on Kriyat Shmona? 
I'm going to bring the pshat, like usually we do, we do pshat, and then we'll do what's hiding behind it, and we we'll try to understand the depths of it, the secret of it. And by Ezrat Hashem, now that you've given me idea, Jeffrey, that you, you're interested about what's going to happen in the end of days, I'm going to I look at my old show, because I don't remember it, but I'm going to try to develop it in more depth and to connect it to our day. Oh, but I, uh, I hope that you enjoy the show. I hope sure. that it's going to give you a different benefit on, on Shabbat when you're going to read the parsha. It's going to give us a different idea how to look at Shabbat. Hi, Anthony, how are you? I Anthony. How are you? So nice to hear your voice. Ken, Bechavod. Anthony, Bechavod? May have muted himself, I think. No, no, the Sorry. Anthony? I can't hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear no, you now. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yaakov, did Yaakov know exactly what will happen at the end of days until it went out of his memory? He knew exactly what would happen. Is that correct? That's mm -hmm. correct. Exactly. But Akadosh Baruch Hu, Akadosh Baruch Hu didn't want him to reveal to us the day. But he, he knew. wanted to tell us when it's going to happen. So he knew exactly. Definitely. If he wanted to reveal to us. What it mean, when it's going to be the end of days? When is the final date of the redemption? Akadosh Bahu didn't want him to reveal to us. And the other thing is, this war started, you say the war, the final war was started on Hoshana Rabbah. As I'll say, that Milhamed Gogomagog, the war of Amageddon, will start in Oshana Rabbah and will end after six oh. months the Pesach, the Nisan. I don't know if that's the final. No, no, no. I'm not a prophet. No, no, no. Uh, Antonio, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not a prophet. My father is not a prophet. I'm not a prophet and I'm not a son of a prophet. I'm telling you what Hazal said in the Gemara. If that's the last war, if that's the war of Armageddon, <laughs> Uh, I'm not a prophet. I'm not on that league. I can read like a parrot, and I can tell you what it said in, in the Gemara. But I'm not a prophet. <laughs> I'm far from it. I'm very simple man. Very simple man. I'm not in that league. Maybe I know how to read. Uh -huh. But to say that I say it's the final word, I'm far away. I can read like a parrot. Whatever it's written, I can read, I can tell you. But prophecy, uh, it's not for my league. I'm too simple. I maybe can read a little bit, maybe. Anthony, I didn't hear you. Anthony, 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 I can't hear you. Prophecies. Anthony, I couldn't hear a word. You say it will start. It will start. Can you? I can't hear you, Anthony. I can't hear you. Sorry. All right. Anthony, can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me, Anthony? Nothing's interfering. I can hear you. Oh, good. Now I can hear you. Hold it. Hold yes. the, 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 the cell phone or can the you? tablet. Hold Did it in that position. Now I can hear you. It's in prophecy. Prophets say the final <laughs> start on Hoshana Rabbi. Is that correct? I couldn't hear a word you're saying. Send me. Tell Ivor to text me, I'll answer you. 
Tell him to text right. me. I can't hear you. I think okay. we're getting a message. Uh, <laughs> I think okay. we're getting a message. Okay. Okay, Rabotai. I hope that you enjoyed the show. I know that it's hour and 25 minutes. I'm sorry that it took so long. I tried to keep it for an Beautiful. hour, the show, and now I've gone four or five minutes after. But Rabotai, thank you very much for joining us this evening. I really appreciate it. Um, on Shabbos, I'm going to give a live show on the Parshat Shavua, but now in more depth and different interpretation of the Zera Shimshon. At half past five, those of you that can attend the show, I would like to see you. In the meantime, I'd like to wish you, first of all, have a good night. Wish you Shabbat Shalom, mm -hmm. a beautiful weekend. Look after yourself and enjoy a peaceful Shabbos, Be'ezrat Hashem, all of us. Amen. Shikai Have a good night. Thank you for joining. Have a good night. Okay. Good night.